Leslie Power, it's so wonderful to have you as the new CEO of the Alliance for Journalist Freedom. Why did you choose the gig? Thank you, Peter. It's really thrilling to be here. I really wanted to work with the Alliance for Journalist Freedom because I was inspired by its purpose to advocate for media freedom and to protect journalist safety. I think it's never been a more important time to advance these issues. Well, I know that you've been a media lawyer yeah. for 30 years, first at the ABC and then the SBS, and you've got other media legal activities as well. Yes, um, I've contributed to a textbook. I teach at Sydney Uni and other universities about media freedom and media law. It's a great passion of mine. So you'd be me, you'd be very familiar with working with journalists on defamation. Yes, on contempt, contempt of court, suppression orders, the rise of privacy, security laws, and whistleblower protection. Whistleblower protection, confidential sources. Right. All of the all of these laws provide a framework within which public interest journalism can be practiced. But sometimes um, it can also cause um, a, a, an intrusion or a chilling effect. The important thing is to balance competing principles, the rights of the individual, the rights of Australia to be protected as a safe nature, nation, with the important role of the media as a fourth estate, bringing public interest stories to the public, holding the powerful to account. Those are all roles that we're very familiar with for the media. So tell us about the six projects we're working on through 2022. The first project is to advocate for the introduction of a Media Freedom Act. This piece of legislation would introduce protections, exemptions for public interest journalism um, to further enhance its work. And um, that would be an equivalent to what we've got with the First Amendment in the United States, which constitutionally guarantees f a, a free mm. press. Correct. Yes, in Australia, many of us don't realise that there is no constitutional protection for a free press. We just assume that the um, access to all kinds of voices that we enjoy today is going to continue and is somehow protected. But that's not the case. And the Media Freedom Act would serve to jump into that gap. So realistically, that's a long-term project because we've got to talk politicians around to the notion of um, enshrining media freedom. Um, I think that's right, but I think that elements of the Media Freedom Act might be introduced into ad hoc pieces of legislation as they come around. I think having a clear idea of where the risk areas are and what protections are needed enables the Alliance to advocate for inclusion of certain protections in a particular piece of legislation, right. even if okay. there's not a holistic act. Okay, okay. So, um, and second? The next important project is, the, um, is an assessment of the future of the media, the future of the press. We're looking at an ambitious horizon, 2035 and beyond. We all know that digital disruption has fundamentally changed the business models of the media, the way that journalists are working. Unless we have an idea of how journalism will be practised in as the 21st century advances, it's difficult to develop policy to protect the important yeah, elements. It's always struck me as weird that um, the media is so bad at long-term planning. Because if you don't know where point, you're going from point A to point B, you don't know where point B is. Um, it's very few businesses would do that. So, so, but for some reason, journalism, what we want from journalism, which presumably has, has to do with trust, and reputation and believability and accuracy. Um, there are very, there's so many elements to get there in 2035. Yeah, I think you've just touched on some of the really important characteristics of public interest journalism. Um, the sort of journalism that warrants protection as distinct from, you know, there's so many people providing so much information, so many stories, some of it credible, some of it not credible to define and build a consensus about what is journalism as opposed to mere storytelling and what is public interest journalism, that's, an, that's the third important project. And that is critical to building trust because it separates journalists from the riffraff, Correct. from the bloggers, the activists um, and the propagandists and so on. Exactly. Another, the fourth project that we've got is also um, aimed at building trust, which is a voluntary accreditation program for journalists and similar to other other sorts of professions where you can tell if someone's um, an educated accountant or signed up lawyer, this would be a voluntary scheme which would provide a tag or a badge 
for journalists so that audience members can say, ah, oh, this piece of um, media um, has been produced according to certain ethical standards, to certain editorial standards. And fifth? The Media Freedom Tracker is the fifth important initiative. And we're examining the Asia-Pacific area and identifying all kinds of acts which intrude or censor journalism or cause risk to journalists. And that project is providing very, very important data for the advocacy work of the Alliance. One element which I think really underpins the wisdom of the Alliance's strategy of working with governments to advocate for change is the, um, is the statistics that almost 33% of actions in the Asia-Pacific area which are impeding or um, constraining press freedom come from government or regulatory action. And that provides sort of a guideline for the Alliance and will continue to do so about where to focus its attentions. Yeah, and so a lot of that is very useful for governments when they're comparing themselves to the people next door and, and how they're tracking in terms of press freedom and democracy, which uh, lends itself to the sixth thing that we're working on domestically. Which is dialogue with government in relation to a range of issues. Um, a lot of them, them coming out of the security field, but where both parties, journalism and um, and government agencies can recognise the benefits that each can bring and to the other. And the springboard for this was, of course, the AFP raids in 2019, which caused massive controversy around Australia, but massive anxiety and a massive chilling effect on journalists. Yes, that was a very alarming day for journalists and those who work with journalists. It wasn't something that we'd ever expected to happen, but it did. It did lead to you know, a major parliamentary inquiry and recommendations have come from that inquiry. And so our dialogue, the Alliance's dialogue with Canva, is around some of the issues mm. that came out and the recommendations from that inquiry. Well, with your firepower, Leslie, it has the potential to be a great year for the AJF. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for and, asking me. And I hope it's a ripper of a year. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be very exciting.